أعوذ بالله السميع العليم من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله وكفى وسلام على عباده الذين اصطفى ولا سيما سيدنا محمد المصطفى صلى الله تعالى عليه وعلى آله وأزواجه وأصحابه وأحبابه أهل الوفا وعلى من بآثاره مقتفى واهتدى أما بعد أيها الأحبة في الله السلام عليكم ورحمة الله تعالى وبركاته Islam is a deen of mahabba in the first place. Allah Ta'ala says, قُلْ إِن كُنْتُمْ تُحِبُّونَ اللَّهِ فَاتَّبِعُونِ Say, if you love Allah, follow me. يعني follow the sunnah of Rasulullah صلى الله عليه وسلم. What's noticeable in this ayah is the following. In order to have following of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam, you ought to believe that he is Rasulullah. If you don't believe he is Rasulullah sent by Allah to guide you to Allah, why would you follow him on the path to Allah? In order for you to follow, you have to have belief that he is Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And in order for you to have belief that he is Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, you have to have belief that there is La ilaha illallah. So La ilaha illallah takes you to Muhammadun Rasulullah. Muhammadun Rasulullah leads you to following the steps of Rasulullah. Without that, there is no basis. Lakin Al-Quran chooses not to mention all this and shortcuts the whole La ilaha illallah. Muhammadun Rasulullah into Qul in kuntum to Allah. Say, if you love Allah, follow me. And that shows you that our whole religion of Islam that we believe in is all based on love. Love to Allah, love to Rasulullah, love to good things. Love of the awliya wa salihin. And that means if there is no love, there is no iman. And therefore, an Nabi al-A'zam sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam says in what al-Bukhari narrated in his sahih, لا يؤمن أحدكم حتى أكون أحب إليه. One of you would not be a believer until I am more beloved to him. Love. And therefore, because we live in this postmodern era or post postmodern era, because we're no longer in the postmodern, now we are in the, the era after the postmodern. And the postmodern era was an era where there was deconstruction of grand ideas for the whole globe. Deconstruction of religion, deconstruction of any big idea, let's do deconstruction of it. We have oftentimes rendered our faith into sets of belief in the mind. Well, Islam does not want us to keep our faith as just theoretical sets of belief in the mind wants you to experience it in the heart through love. And that's why if there is no love to Allah Ta'ala and there is no love to Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, 
there is no Iman. And that's why Kufr is easy. Leaving Islam is easy. Abandoning the deen is easy. Negating the deen is easy. Belittling the deen is easy. All that becomes easy. Why? Because there's no love. And that's why we go to everything that reminds us what the love of Allah and the love of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And we try to marginalize it. So the Quran, we memorize it, not internalize it. And we judge that based on how much do you memorize and how melodious do you chant. Not how much you internalize and how well you live it. So this way we reduce the Quran into a melody that anyone with or without Iman can memorize and render. For the internalization of the book is only for those who believe in Allah and love him. We came to the sunnah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and we took many things that remind us with it and marginalized it even to his birth sallallahu alayhi wa sallam al-mawlid nabawi al-sharif al-mawlid nabawi meaning the prophetic birth that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam himself marked and branded. He took a day out of the week and said, this is a day I was born in. Branding the day. So you don't go about saying that I don't know when Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was born. And you don't go about saying that the birth of the Prophet ﷺ is insignificant and irrelevant because he ﷺ does not mention things that are insignificant and irrelevant in his sunnah. And the hadith is in Sahih Muslim. وَسُئِلَ عَنْ أَبِي قَتَادَةَ الْأَنصَارِ رَضِيَ اللَّهُ تَعَالَ عَنْهُ قال وسئل عن صيام الاثنين يوم الاثنين. The Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم was asked about fasting on Mondays. قال ذاك يوم ولدت فيه. It is a day of my birth. Hence marking Monday number one as a day of his birth. صلى الله عليه وسلم. Number two. Making, celebrating his birth not once a year, but once a week by offering specific worship, fasting that day, thanking Allah Ta'ala for his birth. And that is the sunnah of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And today, after this sort of post modern era, which it seems like many people have also been affected by. On the Islamic side, they also figured they need to deconstruct grand ideas that Muslim had, had, which was expressing happiness for the birth of Rasulullah sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam and marking that day. But they took it so much in the last 20, 30 years to make it a taboo to mention the mawlid of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa to make it a matter of bid'ah to even say I want to be happy for the birth of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa or I want to commemorate the birth of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa which the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa himself commemorated they made it almost that you are a person of shirk it's an event of kufr an event of shirk detrimental to your iman if you express and come and ex and celebrate the birth of rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wa sallam robbing people even from the little avenues left for them 
to rekindle connection to an Nabi al-A'zam sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam and to grow that love and connection to him sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam in the very name of following the sunnah. And there is no greater sunnah than loving Rasulullah. There is no greater sunnah than loving Rasulullah sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa alihi wa sallam for true love yields adherence. Not adherence yield love. Lots of people adhere, but there is no love. But genuine love always yields adherence. Quranically speaking, Allah says, قُلْ إِن كُنْتُمْ تُحِبُّونَ اللَّهِ فَاتَّبِعُونِ If you love, follow. Always, Al-Quran put love before follow after my dear beloved brothers and sisters it is important to claim our prophet of love reclaim every day that we can celebrate the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam's birth in our lives when we celebrate the birth of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wa ala alihi wasallam we don't celebrate the birth of a human being that just came to earth, we celebrate the genesis of unconditional love to the universe. We celebrate the genesis of unconditional compassion to the worlds. We're not celebrating the birth of a human being only. We're celebrating the coming of the best of the creation that taught us how to love, with love, for love, for the sake of love, and showed us the way to love Allah and love His creation and do everything with love, sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam. And once we marginalize that, then we will render our deen into rituals, a list of do's and a list of don'ts. Ritualistically, no more love. And that's what we did today in the postmodern era, so now we memorize the information. But there is no love. We memorize books. But there's no adab. There's no akhlaq. What worth is the information without akhlaq? What worth is information without principles and values? What worth is information without these Ethics that people cherish and live by their whole lives. That's what Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam taught us. It's not the information that we learned from Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, my dear beloved. It is the persona of Rasulullah as well. He himself was the risala and the Rasul. He himself was a walking message. Alayhi wa alayhi salatu wa salam. Lots of things about him, alayhi salatu wasalam. But I want to say, please reclaim your love to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam. Don't be fearful of, of intellectual terrorists who go around terrorizing you if you love Rasulullah or show your love towards his mawlid or other things related to him that that will infringe or your, on your iman or impact it. If any, it will do so positively it will grow your iman it will make your iman closer and better and per more perfect show your love to rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam and celebrate and express happiness for him every single day of your life don't worry about the naysayers they're robbing you not just from your time from your iman as well at times There are things that we can say about the mawlid of the Prophet Sallallahu or the birth. First of all, an Nabiul Mustafa al Khatam, Khatam al Anbiya, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, came roughly about, was born roughly about 500 years after Sayyidina Isa. Sayyidina Isa Alayhi Salatu Wasallam came, showed people love showed people the way to Allah, like all the messengers. But you know what people do. 
people always try to hijack the good message. And therefore, when things became difficult, 100 years, 200 years, 300 years, 400 years, 500 years. But wait, you think that difficult? Things became more difficult. Invasion of Mecca. Invasion of Mecca, war onto the house of Allah that Ibrahim السلام, built and Ismail built. Sayyidina Ibrahim Ismail built the Kaaba. You remember that. Now the Abyssinians are waging a war onto the house of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So if the distant sending of Isa alayhi salam was not enough for you and that things have changed after him, then come and see things change because always you always have people who what? Try to hijack religion. Huh? People try to hijack religion so they can make a business out of it. They can make control out of it. Usually it's two things, power and money. And people use everything, including religion, to exert power and money over people. Versus our religion came to free the people. To liberate the people. Not to put shackles around the people. But that's what happened after Sayyidina Isa alayhi salam, the Mullah Mafia, I call it. Yeah, yeah. Well, there was Mullah Mafia at that, that time as well. Tried to hijack the message of Isa alayhi salatu was salam. So they can make then turn a religion of peace and a religion of love into religion of cult. Cults and hate and grouping. So in the name of religion, you legitimize hating of other people. Othering of others. Since when religions other others? In Islam, we believe everyone out there is either a saint or a potential saint. Everyone. You're either a believer in Allah, which means you're a saint. If you're not a saint, you are a potential saint. Anytime Allah Ta'ala may give you hidayah, you become a saint. So what? There are no othering of others in Islam. And that's why the Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was sent to al alamin not to the Muslimin. وَمَا أَرْسَلْنَاكَ إِلَّا رَحْمَةً لِلْعَالَمِينَ Anyway, that's usual. And we always, our jobs as Muslims is to try to always go back to the book and the authentic prophetic sunnah. So we don't leave, we don't have middlemen in Islam between us and Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And Nabiyu Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam is your direct imam. He's your direct leader. He's your direct role model. He loves you. He gave you love before you were even born. And he's waiting for your love back to him. So you reciprocate also. It's only normal to reciprocate. Don't worry about middlemen. We don't have any middlemen in Islam. It's you and Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So open the ways and go on. But anyway, 500 years, the message of Sayyidina Isa changed a little. With some people. Then the Abyssinians wanted to wage war on Mecca. The Prophet ﷺ was in his mother's womb. Many of the historians say around 50 days after the invasion of Mecca or the attempt to invade Mecca. And you can imagine what was going on in Mecca. When the army is surrounding Mecca and the Meccans were the center and they're the noble people, and now the army was, in the old days, if they invaded your land, they would kill the fighters. They would take the women as slaves or as concubines. They would take the men as slaves. They burn everything. They destroy everything. 
But just when you thought things are getting bad and things are really getting grim and now Isa is 500 years distant and now the people invading Mecca Allah Ta'ala gives hope to humanity by the birth of Rasulullah. Just when you thought things are all going down, nothing is happening. No wonder there is an ishara that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was born at dawn. Fajr. Fajr. The night has already ended. The sun is shining from now on. Maybe it's a message for all of us, for those who are losing hope, and for those who are depressed, and those who think everything is going down. Just when you think everything is going down, if you believe in Allah, hope is right there. You're right there. Hold on to Muhammad on Rasulullah. That's the dawn of your life. That's the fajr of your life. That's when the sun shines in your life. That's when hope starts shining and penetrating through. Darkness will escape with him, sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi Maybe that's the ishara that the Prophet, sallallahu alayhi wa was born dawn after all these things happened. But more in the birth of the Prophet, sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa ashabi wa azwaji wa sallam, we take also more. The barakah of that mawlid of Rasulullah sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa ala alihi wa sallam. First of all, the mother of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is Amina, our mother, Sayyidatuna Amina bint Wahab radiyallahu ta'ala anha wa ardaha zuhriya. And she comes from a noble family in Quraysh. She married Sayyiduna Abdullah, the father of Rasulullah, Sallallahu Ta'ala Alayhi wa Ala Alihi wa Sallam. Sallallahu Ta'ala Alayhi wa Ala Alihi wa Walidayhi wa Sallam. The mother of Rasulullah, Sallallahu Alayhi wa Sallam, as you know, uh, Sayyiduna Abdullah, the honorable father of Sayyiduna Rasulullah, Sallallahu Alayhi wa Sallam, died before an Nabi Al-A'zam Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was born and who took him in and became his father and mother and everything was no other than his own mother Amina bint Wahab and the name itself gives you a feeling of a man a man means safety Amina a man Iman all these things are also interconnected with one another. And as if Allah Ta'ala willed that the mother of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is the home, of, the haven of safety, the haven of Iman, the haven of Aman, the haven of Amin. وَآمَنَهُمْ مِنْ أَطْعَمَهُمْ مِنْ جُوعٍ وَآمَنَهُمْ Min khawf, I amen a home to the people and to Allah, to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Allah gave him Amina as his mother sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. And the, the parents of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that we oftentimes neglect and not remember. And many people think that a Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam asked you to be kind to your own mother but not to be kind to his own mother but how can he ask you to be good to your mother and he's not good to his and where would all we be without his mother sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa ala alihi wa sallam and like the poet says which means he says the most honorable place on the face of the earth in fact the most honorable place Allah ever created. More honorable than heavens and Jannah and everything, he says, is the place where Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is resting. In fact, we call it Rawda min Riyadil Jannah. Where the, next to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is Rawda. 
is a piece of Jannah. Why do you think it is a piece of Jannah? Because it's next to him, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Why do you think it's the best place that Allah Ta'ala created? Because it's touching his own honorable body, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So if the best place Allah created is so honorable because it touched the honorable body of Rasulullah. Then how about the place where Rasulullah sallallahu grew in the womb of that woman and became what he is sallallahu alayhi wa Which one is more honorable then? So we also understand and look at these things. But Amina radiallahu anha took the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and obviously became his mother and father. And everything to him, alayhi wa alihi salatu wa salam. We never heard her complain. We never heard her say anything. In fact, what she said in what Al Ibn Hibban narrated, Wal Hakim in his Mustadrak and authenticated, she said that when the Prophet, when, when I gave birth, when the Prophet وسلم, was born, I saw a light that illuminated all the way to Bisra. Bisra is the first city in Asham, in the land of the Levant. If you were to travel from Mecca all the way to Asham, to Syria, the first thing you will, the first city you will meet is Bisra. She said, I could see Bisra from Mecca when the Prophet Sallallahu Ta'ala was born. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala showed us also that this honorable mother, she, had, she was giving birth towards the end of the night, Fajr time. Usually people are asleep Fajr time. But Allah ta'ala sent her four women to be with her. Four, most of the ulama of the seerah say four. Four women came to the aid of our mother Amina bin Wahab that night. First one is, her name is Baraka. Her name is, it's not a coincidence. Her name is Baraka bin Thalab al Habashiya. She is the African lady that was a slave to Abd al Muttalib, the grandfather of the Rasulullah, an African lady that was serving Abdul Muttalib. Her name was Baraka. And Nabi Sallallahu Ta'ala Alaihi Wasallam eventually married her to one of the people. She had a son named Ayman. She became called Ummu, Ummu Ayman Al Habashiya, the black woman. She was a woman there. Then there is another one, Ashifa. Her name is Yani the healing. You ask Allah for usually what? Shifa. Ya Allah, give us Shifa. Ya Rab. And Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam at his birth that night, who came was Baraka. Then came Ashifa. Ashifa the healing. Ashifa is the mother of Abdul Rahman bin Auf. One of the ten of the Ashar al Mubashareen, Al Shifa. Then came another one, Fatima. Fatima bintu Abdullah al Thaqafiyya. That's the third woman. And Fatima was a beautiful name, and Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam loved it. Fatima is the mother of Uthman bin Abi al As, one of the great Sahaba. May Allah be pleased with him. The ruler, Allah, Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam put him as a ruler over a ta'if and put him as a ruler over governor, over other things. Even though after the departure of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu was told about Uthman bin Abi al-As. He says, I will never remove a governor Rasulullah made as an emir. He is the emir, he remains the emir. His mother Fatima was present. And the fourth one was Thuwayb al Aslamiya, the slave of Abu Lahab. Thuwayb. So we had two slaves and we had two noble women. 
يعني from noble tribes ثويبة and you had بركة no wonder all these women there is a reason for that all these four women Allah gave them so much barakah in their life because they were present in the mawlid of Rasulullah as it appears to us. What appears to us is Allah gave all these four women so much barakah simply for the presence in the mawlid of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. No doubt that they had that barakah. It uh, could be other things, but the mawlid of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa gave so much barakah to them. And today though, we are trying to be present in the mawlid of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa and we ask Allah to give us barakah for being present in such a gathering. First, Ummu Ayman or Baraka, after her son died and her husband died, and Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa married her to who? To Zayd. Remember Zayd? Zayd ibn Haritha, the great Sahabi, who the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was so close to him and he used to be called Hibbu Rasulillah, the love of Rasulullah. So Ummu Ayman now married the love of Rasulullah Sayyidina Zayd. And from him, guess who her son is? Usama ibn Zayd. That man who became the leader of the army over people like Abu Bakr and Umar radiallahu anhumah were in the army and Usama bin Zayd was the general commander. Her son became like that. The son of Ummu Ayman or Baraka became this kind of a man. And she radiallahu anha lived a long time. She was working for Abdul Muttalib but she lived after the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And it was said that she died in the Khilafah of Sayyidina Umar and she's buried in Al-Baqiyah today. But look what happened to her. Her son became so and her, uh, her husband is so, etc. You go to Ash-Shifa. Ash-Shifa, her son was who? Abdul Rahman bin Auf, the wealthiest, almost the wealthiest Muslim that lived back then. Yani next to Sayyidina Uthman bin Affan, Sayyidina Abdul Rahman bin Auf was the wealthiest man. Look at the barakah that she has now through her family. And he's not just among the wealthiest people, but he's among the Ashara al Mubashareen, amongst the 10 people that are giving glad tidings to go to Jannah. Look how the barakah goes through the mother. The blessings go through the mother. Huh? Let's go to Fatima. Fatima bin Abdullah, she, such a great Sahabi. There is a weak hadith, very weak that she mentions, that Tabarani mentions, she says, I was amongst the women that were witnessing the birth of Rasulullah, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and I saw the house filled with nur. I walked that night to the house where the Prophet sallallahu alayhi was born. You all know the Prophet sallallahu alayhi was born in Shi'b Abi Talib, or Shi'b Bani Hashim is what's called. Today it is a library. Maktabat al-Makkah al-Mukarramah or the library in Mecca. Not even less than 200 meters from the Kaaba. Less than that. Right? Right there. Amongst the nice areas in Mecca at that time. It was a hill overviewing the Kaaba. Huh? Jabal al-Safa or Jabal al-Marwa is there, Afwan. And etc. cetera. Uh, Sayyidatuna Fatima bint Abdullah al-Thaqafiyya, she says, I am coming to go allegedly in the hadith, I'm coming to the house where the Prophet ﷺ, where Amina was giving birth to help. And I saw the stars of the sky coming so close, almost they're falling onto me. This is how, I have never seen the stars this close. You know how sometimes you walk and the moon in some nights is so close? Even though you, you see the moon in the middle of the month, full moon, but there are some nights the moon seems so big and so close. It's like almost right next to you, you can reach out to it. It seems that the situation was like this as well, where Fatima was saying that the stars in the middle of the night were so close, I thought they're going to fall on me of that closeness. And obviously, look at her. She became a great Sahabi. Her son became the governor 
and etc. Sayyidina Uthman bin Abi al-As radiyallahu anhuma. And then you look at Thuwayba al-Aslamiyya. Thuwayba was a slave to Abu Lahab. She was not a Muslim. But she was now giving the opportunity to witness the birth of the best of the creation. First of all, she went to Abu Lahab and told him, I'm giving you news that you have a newborn nephew. He told her, go now, you're no longer a slave. You're free, fi sabilillah. The first sign of the prophets, the prophet of equality, the first sign of the prophet of liberation of humanity, even before he said a word, was freeing of slaves. Without anything, he was born, slave was freed, just because of that. And not only that, Thuwayba became obviously a Muslim and a Mu'mina and all this. Thuwayba had a son named Masruh. Her son was named Masruh. She was enslaved at that time still. Before Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa before Abu Lahab freed her. Her son, Masruh, she breastfed the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, a slave woman, nursed a slave woman, an enslaved woman, let me correct myself, an enslaved woman gave the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam when he was born milk or breastfed him. Guess who else did she breastfeed? Her own son, Masruh. Now the brother of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam is a slave. And therefore, the brother of Rasulullah can never be really a slave of a human being. The brother of Rasulullah can only be a slave of Allah Rabbul Alameen. And that's a sign of also freeing slaves and equality of people. But guess what? Allah gave Thuwayba the honor to breastfeed the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam next to her own son Masruh and guess who else she also breastfed? Hamza. Hamza bin Abdul Muttalib. She also was a breastfeeding mother of Sayyidina Hamza. So the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa was the brother of Sayyidina Hamza through breastfeeding relationship. So you have all these things. Look at that. The highest of, noble of, fam of nobles of families, slaves and all of them together. And, and Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, as if he's coming from his birth to tell them, Ya ayyuhal nas, inna khalaqnakum min dhakarin wa untha. Yani reciting the ayah that Allah sent. وَجَعَلْنَاكُمْ شُعُوبًا وَقَبَائِلَ لِتَعَارَفُوا إِنَّ أَكْرَمَكُمْ عِنْدَ اللَّهِ أَتْقَاكُمْ The most honorable you owe people to Allah are those who have more taqwa. Nothing else matters. No matter who you are, Allah Ta'ala, if we can take an ishara from this, wherever your circumstance is, don't worry about that if you are with Allah Ta'ala. And also look at these ladies from the barakah of being present in the birth of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. In the mawlid, Allah gave them all so many things. Be in the right place is what we want to take out of this. Be in the right place, you never know. Be with the right people, you never know. These women, all four women came in the middle of the night. People don't want to go in the middle of the night for anybody, especially for someone whose husband is not there and doesn't have help and all these things. But don't ever be lazy for the sake of Allah Ta'ala. You never know where the good is. You might be missing on helping one person and that event, had you been present, would have been where the pleasure of Allah was pouring onto you. But you've missed it. And now you may have to work your whole life and you may never get it again. There are opportunities Allah Ta'ala throws your ways every now and then. You either open that door and take it or you just walk by and say, I'll wait for my other opportunity. But how fool can one be? Do you know you will have another opportunity at this? 
take it when you have it. Because people always decry things they don't have. And always wish they've had the opportunity to do it. But they did. Except they've always ignored it and walked by. And these four women did not ignore this, the call. They came to the birth of a Sayyida Amina radiallahu ta'ala anha when she was giving birth to Sayyidina Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa And look at that. That became a source of iman for all of them. All became believers. All became sahabis. All had barakah going through them and their families and their lives and everything. And my dear beloved brothers and sisters, when the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was born, ulama usira say that his grandfather, Abdul Muttalib, took him first. And the first thing he did with him, he did tawaf around the Kaaba with Rasulullah. So the house was just 200 meters. It was not that far. You can walk it. It's very easy. So Sir Abdul Muttalib took the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and went around the Kaaba and did tawaf with him as if he wants to connect him to the symbol of Tawheed on earth. But maybe he did not know, maybe he did, that Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is the symbol of Tawheed on earth. Not the Kaaba that gives legitimacy to Rasulullah, but Rasulullah gives honor to the Kaaba. Who he was holding in his hands was much more honorable than the Kaaba entirely and much more honorable than earth and heavens collectively. That's who was in the hands of Abdul Muttalib. And then he gave him the name. Since usually in the old days the father gave the name, now, since the father of, of Sayyidina Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was not present or was dead, then who gave the name was Abdul Muttalib. And he gave him the name Muhammad, the praised. And the people of Quraysh, they asked him, Ya Abdul Muttalib, why did you give him a name that's not common in your ancestors? Because the Arab tribes... Their habit is that they name their children the name of their father or their grandfather or their grand -grand great grandfather. One of the names you gotta pick, you have no choice. It's not up to you to choose the name of your son. The name of your son is already chosen for you if you're a tribal Arab. Done. Huh? There's no other way. That's just how it is. Uh, my name is Muhammad. My cousin's, first, my cousin's name is Muhammad. My grandfather's name, direct grandfather's name is Muhammad. That's how it works. I told my wife when we got married, I have no choice with names. That's just how it is. You take it or leave it. It's not up to me. You know, when you come from a tribe, you just, you, just, you know, you know what you do, what happens if you don't follow the tribal instructions. They're not very kind usually. The names are determined. Abdul Muttalib, he says, I named him Muhammad. They told him, how come you named him Muhammad? And it's a name, the praised, but it's not a common name in your ancestry. There is not even one name in your ancestry that says Muhammad. He says, I, co I named him Muhammad so he becomes praised on earth and in heavens. <laughs> so that everyone is in his praise. And everyone today sings the praise of Rasulullah sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam. In one way or another, we all chant to his praise. And we all talk about his praise. And we all think about him sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Have you ever asked anybody from other nations? And we love everybody. And we respect everybody because Islam affords every human being dignity irrespective of their background. But have you asked them, do you ever wish to see Musa alayhi salam in your dream? Or for those who follow Sayyidina Isa, do you ever wish to see Sayyidina Isa in your dream? But you ask the Muslims, 
Do you wish to see Sayyidina Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in your dream? And no Muslim goes to you but tells you it's a dream and an honor. I plead to Allah to grant me. Therefore, the connection of this ummah to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is unlike any other ummah, unlike any other nation, unlike any other community. And it is that love, my dear beloved brothers, that kept iman in us. It's not the intellectual rationalization that only kept iman with us. It is that love to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam that father gave, that your grandparents gave to your grandfathers and parents. And your parents gave to you. And you are to give to your children. It's that love line that kept you, that gave you a lifeline. Without that love line, there, was, there would be no lifeline. And the minute you cut that love line, there will be no lifeline for you. Don't let anyone take love away to, from to Rasulullah sallallahu from you. Don't under any name or any anything. Show your love to Rasulullah sallallahu Talk about him. Sing his praise. Praise him. There are no limits to praising Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam as a creation because Muslims believe in one creator and everything else is a creation. So as Al-Busiri said, nasara fi Leave that which the Nasara claimed about their Prophet. And ascribe to him whatever of praise you want. Other than giving him the names or the attributes of Allah, Billah, which is kufr. Other than that, whatever attribute you give Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, huwa biha qameer, <clears throat> he is much more worthy than that. Whatever you can praise him with, he's much greater than that. <coughs> greatness itself takes its greatness from him sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Bravery takes its meaning from him sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Love takes its meaning from him, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Faithfulness and loyalty takes their meaning from him, sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. Generosity takes its meanings from him, sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. Beauty takes its beauty from him, sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. Life takes life from him, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, in a sense of a meaningful life. Wallahi, my dear beloved brothers and sisters, we can't wait for the naysayers to mature intellectually, academically, spiritually. There is no time. You waste your life. Run to Allah Ta'ala. Run to the love of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Celebrate the mawlid of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in your homes, in your uh, work, in your hearts, with your family, with your children. And don't restrict it to one day out of the year. What a reductionist attitude to have. But make it every Monday, like Rasulullah himself, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, used to do. Let's do every Monday, Mawlid. Let's do every day, Mawlid, of Rasulullah, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. What else can you be happy for? If you're not happy for Rasulullah, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, then what can you be happy for? All the things that you're happy for, other than him will perish. You're happy for your money, it will go. You can never take anything out of it. You cannot take one rand with you to the qabr. Not one. You can't take a check with you. You can't take a credit card with you. Not allowed. Even the kafan, the shroud, comes with no pockets. No pockets. Not allowed to take anything. All the junk you collected, you leave it behind. But you're going to be asked about it. You can't take it, but you'll be asked, how did you get it? How did you spend it? Your, edu your degrees, your position in the community, your position at work, your position in this, whatever you own, you can't take that with you. When you go to the qabr, they don't say, the malaika don't call you doctor, so-and-so. 
They don't call you Ustad, so and so. They don't call you Sheikh, so and so. They don't call you Qari, so and so. They don't call you engineer, so and so. They don't call you Mr. so and so. Your name. Your name. That's how you, that's who you are. You and your amal. Your name. But you can take with you the love of Allah and the love of Rasulullah. That currency is valid. That currency is valid. You say, I love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and I believe in him. And I love Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and I believe in him. That's the only valid currency in the akhirah. All other currency is outdated and obsolete. It means nothing. And if you love him sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, you will be with him. Even if you don't have the deeds. Even if your deeds are not good. Even if we're not worthy. Even if we're sinful, even if this, his love serves like a gravity. It takes you, you know how gravity gravitates things? It gravitates you from the lowest position to the highest position. All because of the love of Rasulullah. Sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam. Invest in that love, my dear beloved. Invest in it and show your happiness every day. Make every day a mawlid if you can. If you don't show love for Rasulullah, who else are you showing love for <clears throat> from the creation? I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make this city a city of love of Allah and his prophet. To spread love amongst all of us in our hearts. To beautify our life with the love of Allah and the love of his messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. To make us among those people who really have love to Rasulullah in their hearts. Not just in the mind, not just lip service. To make us take our titles away and our positions away from the dunya before we go to the akhirah. And hold on to that flame of love of Rasulullah. To the nur of the love of Rasulullah. To the light of the love of Rasulullah. So we can go past, with that light you can see your way. With other lights you can't see. You'll be like the blind walking through a jungle. But take the love of Rasulullah with you. It will make things easy. It will expose your way for you. So we ask Allah Ta'ala to put that love of Rasulullah in our hearts. That Allah Ta'ala may never take that love from our homes, from our families, from our children, from our grandchildren. That Allah Ta'ala keeps us always around the love of Rasulullah. Around the mawlid of Rasulullah. That we keep always, we go from mawlid to mawlid. And we spend our whole lives in celebrating the mawlid. And if you spend your whole life in celebrating the mawlid and the love of Rasulullah, you cannot be blamed. You can only blame the one who's awake. You can't blame the one who's intoxicated with the love of Rasulullah. What is there to be blamed? So may Allah Ta'ala... Give us that love in the dunya and that love in the barzakh and that love in the akhirah. And may Allah Ta'ala, because of the love of Rasulullah for us, before our love for him, because I don't want to say because of my love to him, I don't know if that love is genuine or good or accepted or pure. But I ask Allah by the love of Rasulullah to his ummah, by his love to us, by his kindness to us, by his care about us. Because of that, Ya Allah, because of that love that you gave, that you put into your prophet on, from, to us, Ya Allah, forgive us. And Ya Allah, grant us the opportunity to reciprocate back. And grant us, Ya Allah, the vision of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi wa Wasallam in the dunya before the akhirah, in the state of awakeness and in the state of asleep, and in every state, Ya Rabbal Alameen. Don't, Ya Allah, don't let us be inseparable or separate from Rasulullah. Sallallahu Alaihi wa Wasallam. Not a minute, not a second, not less than that. Throughout our whole lives, Ya Rabbal Alameen. Ya Allah, let us take our deen from the rituals that we're doing to the spiritual that is pleasing you, Ya Allah. So that we move away from making the deen lip service to make the deen heart experience. Movement to you, Ya Allah. 
closeness, closeness to you and love to you and your Rasul. وصل اللهم وسلم وبارك على سيدنا محمد وآله والحمد لله رب العالمين.